fire, 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 fire. I command them to the abyss. I command them to the abyss. Say good afternoon, Holy Ghost. Good afternoon, Holy Ghost. I worship you. I worship you. I adore you. I adore you. I love you so much. I love you so much. You so much. I surrender to you. I surrender to you. Take over me. Take over me. Lead me. Lead me. Guide me. Guide me. Protect me. Protect me. Protect me. Bring my blessings today. Bring my blessings today. Blessings today. The Bible says that where two or three comes together in my name, Jesus said that there I am in their midst and also this afternoon. Jesus Christ is here, the Holy Ghost is here, God Almighty is here. We are in the presence of God and we'll have a privilege to go through the word of God together this afternoon. Let us go through the word of God together this afternoon from the book of Mark. Mark chapter 14. We're going to read from verse number 32. The Bible says that they went to the place called Gethsemane. Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. He said to them, stay here, keep watch. Going little further, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not my will, what I will, but what you will. And the Bible said that when he returned his, to his disciples, found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you sleeping? Couldn't you keep watch for an hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Okay, we will start at verse number 38. But the Bible says that watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus Christ was talking to his disciples and he tells them, watch and pray. Watch and pray. Wake up and pray. He was telling them, don't sleep. Wake up and pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Wake up and pray. Give yourself time to pray. Child of God, don't slumber, don't sleep, don't relax. Watch and pray. Can you can you can you say watch and pray? Watch and pray. As a child of God, watch and pray. Wake up and pray. In the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 8, the Bible says that be alert and be of sober mind. You are enemy, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. No, the Bible is saying that your enemy is not sleeping. Your enemy is not resting. 
but the Bible says that your enemy the devil throws around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Amen. It's not resting. The enemy is not resting. Why are you resting? The enemy is not sleeping. The Bible says that one day in heaven there was a time that the angels presented themselves before God. And the Bible said that Satan was among those angels. When angel, angel Lucifer, Satan was there, the Bible said that God asked Satan, where have you been? And the Bible said he had been roaming around. Part of that roaming around he was looking for someone to devour. Amen. As he was looking for someone to devour, he was looking for someone who is slumbering. He was looking for someone who is sleeping. Amen. Then child of God, watch and pray. It is for your own good. Amen. I think this is very, very much important to emphasize, to say that watch and pray when you are waking up and you are watching and you are praying, it is for your own good. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus Christ when he was on the cross, when he was on the cross, as he was nailed on the cross, he looked down, there was his mother, Mary, Mary was crying, crying for his son who was being crucified on the day. Mary was crying, seeing that the son that she had given birth is dying. The Bible said that Jesus said that, don't cry for me, cry for yourself and your children. Amen. Cry for yourself. Amen. Cry for your family. Amen. Then, then in the similar manner, when you're talking about crying, what you was talking about? Pray. Pato, don't just cry. Don't just cry. Amen. Cry in prayer. Amen. As you are watching and you are praying. Cry in prayer. There, yeah, there's something that is troubling you. Pray. Amen. I don't know whether you are hearing what I'm saying. Amen. Sometimes don't even wait for that thing to come and you begin to pray. We don't. We are not supposed to start praying because we have got problems. Amen. There are people who pray because they have got a problem. You know, there's there are people like that, you know. If you if you if you see the their call, you know this one now is in trouble. Amen. If you see them in the service, you know this one now is in trouble. Amen. But we're not supposed to pray because we are in trouble. Amen. We are supposed to pray even when things are going well. Amen. Pray even when things are going well. Amen. Prayer to a child of God must be a lifestyle. Amen. Prayer to a child of God, it must be a lifestyle where you live the life of prayer. That is the kind of the life that Jesus Christ lived. Amen. I want to tell you this. You are hearing about Jesus Christ going to the mountain this time to go and pray. But... It was not as if he was going to pray because he knew what only what is going to happen tomorrow. Amen. This was his lifestyle. Amen. That he will go to the mountain and pray even when things are going well. Amen. Even when things are going well, he will go to the mountain and pray. Amen. Because prayer generates spiritual stamina. Amen. Help you gain spiritual authority, spiritual power. 
Amen. Then if you live life of prayer, you will live a powerful life. Amen. Power-filled life. Amen. In such a way that even the day that you want a miracle to happen, it won't take much of your time to pray because you have prayed. Amen. The Bible talks about this day that Jesus Christ, he was passing by the roadside. The Bible says that as he was passing by the roadside, there was a blind man. This blind man, the Bible says that was the son of Timeo. That's why his name was called Bartimaeus, who began to hear the loud noise and begin to ask that today what is happening. And they told him that today Jesus Christ of Nazareth is passing by. Amen. As Jesus Christ of Nazareth today is passing by, but me say, oh, are you talking about Jesus is passing by? He begin to shout, Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. People who were there were like, Bartimaeus, you are making noise. Bartimaeus, shut up. But Bartimaeus knew that today is the day for my miracle. He knew that today is the day for my breakthrough. When they say shut up, he kept on shouting until Jesus Christ heard him and he stopped. Amen. And the Bible said that when Jesus Christ had stopped, it said, bring the blind man towards me. And the blind man was brought to Jesus. Amen. And Jesus asked, what do you want me to do for you? And the Bible say that, they say that. Bartimaeus said that, I want to see. And Jesus Christ spoke a word and said that begin to see. Immediately the blind eyes of Bartimaeus opened. Amen. He began to shout, I can see. I want to tell you that for Jesus Christ to open the blind eyes of Bartimaeus, he did not pray for an hour. He did not pray for two hours. He did not pray for an hour. He did not pray for two hours because he had prayed. Amen. He lived the life of prayer. Amen. A life of prayer will assist you and help you a lot that even in the day when you are looking for for grace, spiritual stamina, spiritual power, it won't take you much to get an answer. Amen. Because when you are living a prayerful life, it is as if hey, you are depositing in your spiritual prayer bank. Amen. You are that time you are praying and you are not praying because you are looking for anything you are praying the prayer of fellowship amen. you are praying but when you are praying you are fellowshipping with god amen it is not as if you are looking for anything amen and sometimes you might the whole prayer you might not even have asked anything but it does not mean that that prayer has gone to waste Amen. That prayers are banged. Amen. And it becomes your prayer buffer. Amen. Your prayer power. Amen. When you need a miracle, you just speak a word. Amen. And the thing change. Amen. That's what the Bible will tell you that even the day that Jesus Christ called a storm. He did not pray to say, oh, let us pray for an hour for the storm to go. He spoke to a storm and the wind died down. Amen. Why? Because he's afraid. Amen. People now, they want to speak a word when they've not prayed. I don't know whether you are hearing what I'm saying. Amen. People want authority. They want to be women of authority. They want to be men of power, but they don't want to pay the price. Amen. You have to pay the price. Amen. And that price is a life of prayer. 
Amen. The life of watching. Amen. The life of watching, the life of praying. Where prayer has become a lifestyle. Amen. Prayer in your life must become a lifestyle. Amen. That's how it must be. It must become a, a lifestyle. It must become your life. Amen. It must become your life. Amen. You know, when we're talking about it needs to become your life. It must become a habit. Amen. No, there are certain activities in your life which have become a habit. Amen. Which if you don't, I have heard when I'm talking to people and they say that, you know, they say that, you know, I can feel that I am hungry now. They say, well, I, I think it's about 10 o'clock. They're talking about 10 o'clock in the morning. They say that they have not eaten breakfast. Then, why are they hungry? They are hungry because to them it has become a habit that they know that they have to eat breakfast. They need to eat lunch. That's why now they are feeling it. Amen. And if they have not eaten, they will feel it in their body that they have not eaten. I've heard even some who goes to gym. I remember even myself when I was still used to go to gym. You will feel that by the time where you used to exercise, you can feel that something is wrong. Amen. You can feel that something is missing because it has become part of your life. It has become a habit that your body is used to. Amen. So prayer must be like that physically and spiritually. Amen. You are supposed to feel a difference when you have not prayed. Amen. Or ah, it's like I'm missing something. Amen. I don't know whether I'm talking to somebody. Amen. It's like I'm missing something. Amen. It's like I'm, I've missed prayer. Amen. And, and I want to tell you this. This kind of prayer is not the prayer where you pray because you feel like. You feel like. You know, a prayer, it must not be a prayer because you go like, I feel like praying today I pray. Amen. I, some of them, there are people who feel like, like, I, I don't feel like going to church. Amen. What's on Sunday? Today is a Sunday. Yes, today is a Sunday. There are people who have done that today and this morning. I don't feel like going to church. They did not go to church because they didn't feel like. If there is a child of God who do something like that, it's a problem. Amen. How can you feel like? The same way tomorrow is Monday. Monday to those who go to work. Most of the time is the time when many people don't want to go to work because they were, they were just adjusting to weekend. Now Monday. Nobody feels like going to work on Monday. At least 80%. But do people go to ch- go to, to work even they do, though they don't feel like? Yes. They don't feel like but they go to work. But how now you don't feel like going to the service and you don't attend? How can it be? Does it mean that it means that your prayer life is not yet solid? Your relationship with God is not yet solid. And now it means that it in your critica, things which are critical in your life, things which are critical in your life, things which are important in your life, it is as if your job is important. More than God, because when you don't feel like praying, you don't pray. When you don't feel like going to work, you go to work. 
But you, we, we forget that it was God who have blessed us with that what? With that job. Amen. Before job was God. Amen. Even after your job, there will be God. Amen. I think that's what we need to, to clarify that portion. That means as a child of God, who have got the revelation, you will go like, no matter what, my prayer life is very important. Amen. Because sometimes when the enemy wants to attack somebody, what he will do, he will first attack their prayer life. Amen. Enemy knows, the devil knows that your prayer life is your source of power. Amen. Then that means sometimes when you are being attacked, you will see what is happening here to the disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. When the Bible say that by the time when they were supposed to pray, when Jesus Christ left them and he go yonder to pray, the Bible said that when he come back, he find them sleeping. Find them asleep. Find them snoring. And it, the enemy does not want to pray, them to pray because he knows that if they watch and pray, they will not fall into temptation. Even if they found themselves in the temptation, they will come out quickly victorious because of the power of God in them in the temptation. Amen. Amen. Then most of the time when the enemy want to attack anybody, what the enemy does is start by attacking their prayer life. Amen. If you want to see whether the enemy is, is planning to do something, look at the attack of your prayer life. Amen. If you feel like you don't want to pray, you feel like you don't want to pray, or in prayer you are slumbering, know that the enemy is up to something, or you are already under attack. Amen. If you feel like it is hard to fast, know that you are also, the enemy is attacking. Because Amen. how the enemy attack, sometimes you don't first see the attack itself. He Amen. attack the prayer life. Amen. Because the prayer life, it is what keep the devil away. Amen. That's what the Bible is saying that in the book of Mark chapter 14 verse number 20, 38. Watch and pray. Amen. So that you may, you will not fall into temptation. Amen. And child of God, when you realize, oh, I just feel lazy. When you begin to just feel lazy to go to the presence of God. Something which is just coming by the time which you are supposed to be praying. Amen. Know that the enemy you want to you want to come up with another attack. Amen. Then as a child of God, one of the things that we need to defend by all means is our prayer life. Amen. Our prayer life, we must defend it. Our time that we are supposed to spend waiting upon God. As the Bible says that in the book of Isaiah. Hallelujah. Amen. Say fire, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the word of God. I love the word of God. I'm enjoying the word of God. I'm enjoying the word of God. Verse number 31, that those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not be, uh, and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Other visions say that those who wait in the Lord. Then you see, as you waiting upon the Lord, spending time in the presence of God, it is as if it's the time to recharge. Amen. Where God give you supernatural power. Amen. Supernatural stamina. Amen. Supernatural energy. Amen. Which will help Amen. you to see God quickly in every sphere of your life. Amen. 
then uh, why, why? Let, 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 let us understand this. You see your cell phone, the amount of time it will, you will put it in charger will determine how charged it will be to go through the day. Amen. To go through the activity that you want to use that cell phone. Amen. But now, if you feel like you just feel like I don't want to charge, you feel like I don't want to charge my phone. I'm telling you that uh, following day, the battery will be flat. Amen. When the battery will be flat, it will disappoint you because you will not be able to use that cell phone. Amen. In the same way, if you get lazy to pray when you are supposed to wait upon the Lord, you get lazy. Amen. The enemy will be able to find you in the corner and begin to attack you. Amen. And you will not have enough Amen. to see the power of God Amen. then as a child of God it's important Amen. one of the things that feelings must not work and when you feel like you are lazy you must fight Amen. and you do it is prayer Amen. prayer We thank God with the grace to be able to pray. Amen. Having fixed prayer times. Amen. If it was not so. Because one of the biggest mistakes of other people is that they do not have fixed prayer times. And when they don't have fixed prayer time, it's easy not to pray when you don't feel like praying. But when you've got fixed prayer time like what we have, this assists you. You just know there's a service. I have to pray. Amen. And that assists you because you have got timed prayer and you have got scheduled prayer. If it was not because of a scheduled prayer and the timed prayer, it was going to be so easy to fall. Amen. But because now already the prayer times are fixed, are scheduled. Amen. It's so easy. You just, you just, you just have to enforce that schedule. Amen. Make sure that is the time to for the service. I will pray. Amen. And you pray the required time. Amen. Make sure oh, is the time for fasting. Like now, when we're gonna be going for twenty-one days on the seventh. 7th of July. You say, ah, it's the 21 days now. I will do what? I will fast. Amen. Then this will make you, you know, this will make you to be stable. Amen. Otherwise, if you don't do so, if you don't do so, you will find yourself that Hey, the enemy have closed your prayer time. Amen. Which you don't want the enemy to do what? To close your prayer life. Amen. If he close your prayer life, he will finish you. Amen. Because prayer, it's your time to, to download Amen. grace, power, blessings from above. Amen. Anyway, because it's a midday service, can you say my day is blessed? My day is blessed. Can you say my family is blessed? My family is blessed. My career is blessed. My career is blessed. Everything is turning around for my good. Everything is turning around for my good. Say I will not die before my time. I will not die before my time. I will never be sick in my life. I will never be sick in my life. I will never be broke in my life. I will never be broke in my life. Prosperity is mine. Prosperity is mine. Favor is mine. Favor is mine. Say devil. Devil. Take off your hands. Take off your hands. From my everything. From my everything. Say I 
in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say angels. Angels. Bring my harvest. Bring my harvest. My miracles. My miracles. My testimonies. My testimonies. My jobs. My jobs. Angels. Angels. Asha me. Asha me. Everywhere. I go everywhere I go in everything that I do in everything that I do represent me represent me present me present me in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus say Lord Jesus Christ Lord Jesus Christ you are my Lord you are my Lord you are my savior you are my savior wash me with your blood wash me with your blood Forgive me my sins. Forgive me my sins. Bless me today. Bless me today. Protect me from today. Protect me from today. With your power. With your power. Of the Holy Spirit. Of the Holy Spirit. From today. From today. I am born again. I am born again. I am saved. I am saved. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Send me the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. The love of God. The fellowship of the Holy the Spirit. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us all. Be with us all. Surely goodness and love. Surely goodness and love. Shall follow me. Shall follow me. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. And I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I dwell in the heart of the Lord forever. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So this afternoon, because it's a Sunday, we remind each other of giving. The Bible says that in the book of Proverbs chapter 11 from verse number 24. One person gives freely, yet gain even more. Another withhold unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Then, as the children of God, we are supposed to be generous. Because the Bible says that that's where your prosperity lies. More especially when we are talking about this generosity. It's being generous unto the work of God. Amen. It's your opportunity to sow into the kingdom. Amen. Into the fatal ground. Amen. Which is the anointing. Connecting your substances into the anointing. Amen. Anointing breaks the yoke, breaks all the attacks. Amen. Anointing blesses and multiplies. Amen. The Bible says that in the book of Luke chapter 6, verse number 38. The Bible says that give, it shall be given to you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured into your lap. With the measure you use, it shall be measured to you. Give. Don't withhold. Give. When you give, it's also a way to show God, I trust you. Amen. You are my blesser. Amen. And when you do that, you give him an opportunity to be able to multiply our resources. Amen. One of the, of the greatest Hallelujah. Amen. One of the greatest exercise that I've ever seen working in my life is the exercise of giving. You will never go wrong in giving. Hallelujah. Amen. Then I want to say to us this afternoon, may God bless you. Have a blessed and a successful day in Jesus' name. Bye bye, everybody. Have a blessed morning, day, and afternoon, and night. Amen. Bye bye.